It's a rite of passage for every aspiring YouTuber to make at least one pointless tier list and unleash their garbage opinions into the cesspool that is the internet. If you have a microphone and an internet connection, what you have to say matters. Your word essentially becomes law. The weight of the world is on your shoulders and the fate of the global economy is in your hands. Which is why I agonized for days, nights, weeks, and eventually months to figure out the perfect topic for my own. Coolmath Games has been an internet staple for over a decade now and I've never been on the site. So naturally it's only right for me to grab a small collection of the most popular and most beloved games on the site and rank them for the entertainment of internet strangers. If you disagree with any of my placements in this tier list, I hate you. The first game I played was Shark Boy and Lava Girl. It's a silly little platformer, and if you know anything about me, you'll know I do love some silly, but I also hate some platformer. I was surprised to find out that this platformer's primary gameplay involved a fair amount of platforming and some puzzles. You grab a friend, assign them an element and gender, and bang your head against the wall repeatedly after accidentally ricocheting into some green goop and being forced to restart the level. My personal favorite part of the game was abusing the physics to bypass the puzzles whenever I softlock myself by being an idiot. I could cheese. <laughs> oh my god, you can. You're godlike. It's You're cracked. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. Oh my god, I'm so good. For this game, my friend Kitty and I actually played together in person because they were visiting me for a bit and I love to utilize my friends for free labor. In my opinion, the controls were floaty and didn't feel very good, which isn't ideal for a platformer. I put the game in C tier. Next up on the chopping block was Bloons Tower Defense. I'm obviously familiar with this franchise, as I'm sure every person that clicked on this video is. The games have been around for ages and are very very popular with good reason. They're fun, there's so many different ways to win, different strategies and ways to play, unless you're playing this one. In the original Bloons Tower Defense, there's only one map and five towers to pick from, each of which only has two available upgrades. This might sound fine, I mean five towers surely means that there is at least some diversity in what you can do, but no, the tax tower is useless. Frozen Bloons can't be popped without bombs, so any strategy involving either of those towers is obnoxiously expensive, like the video if you hate capitalism, which means the the only towers left that are really worth getting are the normal dart tower and the super monkey, which is also obnoxiously expensive, but it's really cool, so I'll allow it. This means the absolute undeniable optimal strategy is to just sort of spam the board with dart towers and let them carry you through until the end. I could have easily ridden this out and just won the game this way, but the power of peer pressure and my own desire to see the super monkey in action resulted in me selling like half of my dart monkeys to be able to afford one. Within a couple rounds after after that I was dead because while the super monkey was awesome, it apparently could not single-handedly carry me to victory like I'd hoped. Okay, oh, no, no, I'm gonna die! <gasps> no! Uh, no! Kill, oh, kill, 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 motherfucker, oh, kill! I told you to the uh, the uh, top corner and I should have thinned out the front! What's wrong with you? What did you just, don't... This game's done. The game itself seems to be held together by Gorilla Glue. The dart towers will just miss randomly, and while I don't think it was intentional, it might have been. There are also these little tips that you get as you play, which is nice and helpful, except for when they just lie. This isn't true. You're lying to people, and it isn't right. Realistically though, the original BTD is more of a demo than anything, but I still really had a lot of fun with it. This might be another controversial ranking already, and I might have some bias as someone who really likes tower defense games, but I put it into A tier. Do you think anyone had their furry awakening because of balloons? Next up is Snail Bob 2. This one was pretty good. You play as this absolute psychopath. He wants to reach the exit, you need to help him get there, and there are obstacles that you have to clear to make that happen. It's silly, it's charming, and it's oddly dark at times. There's this point where Bob stumbles across a den with some caterpillars in it that definitely want to eat him, and if that's not bad enough, next to the caterpillars is a stockpile of the shells of previous victims. At another point in the game there's a hole in the ground and you need to wait for some other snails to fall into it then use them as a bridge to the other side which isn't terrible in a vacuum but those snails are not escaping you are leaving them to die after using them to reach your goal but good job i'm sure those deaths were completely necessary right bob it's a c-tier game idle breakout goes crazy this is not a bit i am not joking if i could have it on my phone i would but apparently it's only available on an older version of android and i'm pissed as hell about that if you don't like idle games then you will probably never experience pure joy and I pity you. The sound design is peak and it tickles my brain just right every time a level reset happens. 
This isn't really a game that you're going to pick up with the intention of actively playing. You launch it while you're doing other things and just sort of check in on it sometimes. Click a few bricks, buy a couple upgrades, then go back to grinding away at your minimum wage 9 to 5 or whatever else it is you kids get up to nowadays, like the video if you hate capitalism. Idle Breakout was an easy S tier. If you disagree, go play it right now with sound on and come back once you've seen the error of your ways. Subscribe and leave a heartfelt apology in the comments. Once you're done apologizing, you can join me in playing Parking Fury 2. By the way, for the most part, picking what game in a series I played was arbitrary, especially if I've never played them. So I'm sorry in advance if you're a big fan of the Parking Fury trilogy and are left deeply hurt and betrayed by my choice to specifically play the sequel. Your feelings are valid and I hear you, but the game is D tier and I'm glad it'll never get another entry. It sucked and the only thing it had going for it was the soundtrack and the ability to drive a forklift. Oh, oh, this is- look, What is this? this? What are you guy. doing? I'm a little guy. Look at me, I'm forklift, I'm forklift, forklift. certified. Boring game. People were very excited for me to play Moto X3M, which was sort of surprising to me because I'd never even heard of it until I was collecting games for the list. You play as this floppy little dude, and you have the very simple goal of driving your motorcycle from point A to point B, except the goal isn't so simple after all. Of course, you could take your sweet time and cautiously navigate the track, giving yourself ample time to react to the obstacles ahead if you're a little bitch. But if you want any hope of getting three stars, you'll have to put the pedal to the metal and throw caution to the wind. And if you're like me, you'll end up dying in a fiery explosion multiple times doing it. But that doesn't matter because you're a winner, and that three star rating makes it all worth it in the end. The glory, the applause, the billion dollar Exxon endorsements. Just tune out the laughter and mean words from your friends. I'm, I'm locked in. I'm locked in right now. Uh huh. What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> B tier for bullying. Cut the Rope is a puzzle game where you feed candy to this little freak. This game challenged me mentally in ways it probably shouldn't have. I'm not dumb. Okay, I gotta math this out. This is... Yup. The gameplay is simple. Cut the rope. It's right there in the title. Unfortunately, if you cut the wrong rope at the wrong time, it sets off a chain reaction that will ultimately end with Omnom being really, really sad. And you don't want Omnom to be really, really sad, do you? He doxes people. The suffering I've endured is immeasurable and I've been swatted 37 times. Somebody please stop him. Devin, when she forgets how momentum works. Yep, 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 yep. Don't Go you dare it. restart. Don't you dare restart. Don't you dare hit that restart yeah, button. Deal with the, the, the consequences right of your actions. You what cut do you mean that I rope right restart. goddamn now. You cut that rope right Deal goddamn now. Deal with the consequences now. of your actions. 38 times. C tier. Fuck you, Omnom. Pink is a puzzle game where you click things and like drag them around and stuff. It actually comes from a series of color-based puzzle games by solo dev Bart Bonte, and every level works in a completely different way from the last. Check out this one where you fling a flamingo around or something. Move. Move, freak. <laughs> <laughs> um, the puzzles aren't too difficult and it's relatively short. I beat it in less than 20 minutes, but I still had quite a bit of fun doing it. B tier. I was never personally big on the Papa series of games. I always thought they were sort of stressful and it took forever to save for the upgrades I wanted. And Papa's Freezeria doesn't really change that for me. One thing it did change was just how much they advertised to me. Launch the game, advertisement. Continue to menu, advertisement. You can even spend your in-game cash in order to see more advertisements in between orders. Once you've made it past the ads, there is some gameplay though. Hello? Squirt. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> oh, yes, you squeeze the whipped cream can, as you do. It wouldn't work. Most of which involves balancing your time and energy between taking orders, completing mini games, and being doomed to bankruptcy because you dropped a cherry two pixels too far to the left. All while your sanity melts away like the order you forgot you took at the beginning of your shift. C tier. It could have probably gone higher, but... Papa wants to talk? Okay, yeah, just, just one sec. Sorry about that, guys. Next up is Lemonade Stand. This is a game that's actually about math, so grab your calculator and throw it straight into the trash compactor because that's cheating and you should be ashamed for owning one in the first place. You start off with $20 and no inventory and you need to change that. You're also given an idea of what the weather will be like, so you can try to estimate things like how much ice to use, how many people are gonna want lemonade. But look, let's be real, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. These customers are impossible to please. Oh, the cost is too high. There's not enough sugar. This is just a glass of of water. Shut up. Doesn't anybody want to see a young entrepreneur thrive anymore? Somehow I pulled through though against all odds and I managed to turn a profit of $8. Congratulations! Net profit $8!
Let's go! Let's, Let's go! go. go. Never shit. touch this game again. That's not so bad. I mean, most businesses operate at a loss for the first few years, so I've got to be doing something right. Game sucks though, D tier. Run 3 is so good. Oh my god, I can't stress this enough. It's so fun, and I feel like I barely scratched the surface. Even after playing for over half an hour, you truly cannot get the same experience anywhere else with any other game. I've been playing it in my mind palace for the entire time I've been talking about it, and I'll probably load it up as soon as I'm done. That's a lie. The only game I've launched in over a month is TFT. Please help me. It's a fantastic game though, which is made somewhat jarring by the fact that I really didn't like Run 2 when I tried it as a kid. I just didn't really get the hype. It didn't seem all that interesting compared to other Flash games I was playing at the time, and it was probably the biggest reason for me not using Cool Math games. My personal favorite character was the Skater. Technically not the best character if you're looking for survivability, but if you're like me, then that doesn't matter. There was also a pretty cool trick I did sometimes, usually by accident, where I would sort of hug the outside of the wall and hover for an extended period of time. S tier game. OVO is weird. It's like if a 2D platformer was good, but still pissed me off. The controls are really smooth, so when you inevitably lose your sanity throwing yourself at the same level over and over and over again, you'll know that there's nobody to blame but yourself, which feels bad, but also kind of good. The levels are designed to be challenging, which is obviously bad for me. It never felt unfair though, and when I finally did manage to power through a particularly tough stage, it was incredibly satisfying. Please. This is... Yes. No. Let's go. Oh, Thank God. God. That said, what the fuck is this? There's so much on the screen. What am I supposed to do here? Why is the coin in a cube? Okay, well, let's just see what happens if I wait it out. And it just reverses. Okay, yeah, that's, that's great. I did eventually figure it out, but that was an evil level. I felt really smart afterwards though, so A tier game. If you personally really hated that a game made me feel talented and intelligent, then you're really gonna love this next game. Bloxors is a game that made me feel the exact opposite of both of those things. It's a classic puzzle game about putting the square peg into the square hole, but first you gotta sort of like wiggle it around a bit. No, oh, yeah, you're almost there. Just gotta like turn it around and... Thankfully, I had a supportive cast of friends to keep my spirits high the entire time playing. Uh, why did I do that? Devin! Devin! Where are you going? I don't... Stop. You guys are mind flooding me, alright? I think, more than anything, this game is very good as a spectator. Because while I personally didn't have a ton of fun playing it, my friends were having a blast watching. And isn't that what matters in the end? Content. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I complained, I do think this game is pretty good. The puzzles are satisfying to figure out, if maybe a little tiny, eensy weensy bit frustrating. It's a B tier game, but if you want the best experience, you should just force your friends to play it instead. Tiny Fishing is a mobile game. A lot of mobile games made in the past few years follow one of several formulas, and this one is no different. That isn't to say it's bad, but it definitely is a bit bland. There's a basic gameplay loop of earning as much money as you can with your limited resources, spending money to increase those resources, and of course, earning money while offline. C tier. It's fine. Oh, what is that? This buttered up baby is Simon, and Simon is rich now. It's your duty as Simon's older brother to help him battle off pirates, vikings, and a handful of racially insensitive depictions of various groups that want to steal his gold and his friggin' diamonds. Most of the gameplay involves shooting tennis balls at the aforementioned bad guys, seeking to knock them to their demise and protect your riches. After after ruthlessly killing tens of people and recruiting a dog that transforms into a human, you're finally left to face off against your greatest foe yet your neighbor, who is kidnapped and is holding hostage your actual greatest foe yet, your parents. A tier game. In Ninja Painter 2, you play as a ninja who paints. Maybe I just didn't stick with it long enough, but honestly the puzzles were just kind of boring. It's kind of silly to throw yourself out of a window the first time, but mostly it just kind of sucks. Not very fun. C tier. Next up is Jacksmith, which... Not this again. You play as a donkey blacksmith in a medieval world of furries, crafting weapons and equipment to help warriors in their quest to rescue the princess from a rat wizard named Dudlin. Do you think anybody had their furry awakening because of Jacksmith? The gameplay is sort of like something you'd find from the Papa series, which makes sense because it's by the same team. But with this game, you also get this sort of auto battler segment where you follow the warriors you sold your weapons to and scoop up the loot their enemies drop. And of course, it wouldn't be a Papa's game without more ads. I'm a bit shocked by how much I like this game. 
Obviously, I knew it was incredibly popular. I remember seeing it on the front pages of sites like Armor Games and Mini Clip in the past, but I'd never taken the time to actually play it. With it being a flipline game, I figured it wouldn't really be up my alley, but honestly, it was a lot of fun. One thing I found myself doing the entire time while playing was trying to keep up with the unique weapon recipes you get at the end of battles. I just thought they were cool, and it felt nice to be able to get all the parts I needed and see them come together. It's another S tier, as long as you can ignore all the ads. Hey, quick fun fact about me, I'm a huge basketball fan. I'm a fan of the Bulls, and have over 3,000 hours across multiple NBA 2K games on Steam. After some long and difficult conversations with my therapist, they determined it would be best if I took a break from basketball games altogether, so I could take a step back and reevaluate my life. But that dumbass doesn't know anything about anything, so next on the list is Basket and Ball. I can stop whenever I want. Basket and Ball is about a basket and a ball, and they're in love. Your job as the ball is to bounce your way over to your love interest and jump into her hoop. Wait, is this game simulating illicit acts between a man and a woman? Propaganda aside, the game isn't very good. The idea is neat and I can see what they were going for, but it's so hard to control. There's this really annoying mechanic where you've got a mash to build up momentum, which makes sense. It's like you're dribbling a basketball, except it kind of sucks. And if you don't mash fast enough, you lose your progress and have to do it again. The ball also keeps its momentum, which again, makes sense, but it also makes it very difficult to judge where you're going to be bouncing especially when you're mashing to bounce. I, I, I'm losing control. <laughs> there was nothing I could do. I was just gaining fucking momentum for no reason. <laughs> the game is just overall unsatisfying. It doesn't even really feel good to finish a level because you know all that means is that there's another level waiting for you to struggle through. This was probably the worst game of the list in my opinion. D tier. But it did solve my basketball game addiction. Red Ball 4 Volume 3. Well, wow, that is a mouthful. That's right, a mouthful of ball. All you have to do in this game is navigate some obstacles to get from one side of the stage to another. You were just a red ball living in a peaceful little red ball world when suddenly these square shaped freaks came in and started cubing up your boys. I actually did enjoy this game though. It's another where you're playing as a ball, which doesn't exactly bode well. Okay, well look what? at his what? silly what? little face. Like... <laughs> <laughs> look, there's some trial and error and help. <laughs> but I think they actually did a good job of making the controls feel good. And in my opinion, they nailed the vibe. This is a bomb? This is a bomb? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if what to do. If you think something's with. a bomb, why do you like attach your body to it? I don't know what to do in this situation. Um, I think the best part about this game is that it isn't trying to do too much. It isn't exactly hard to not do too much when you play as a ball and your enemies are squares, which is probably why it works so well. It was paced really well and I beat the game in about 20 minutes. I don't know if I'd call it challenging, but it presented enough of a challenge for me to stay engaged at the very least. How much of that was the game's design versus my own incompetence? is up for debate, but I had a good time, so I'm not complaining. A tier. Potato Man Seeks the Truth is a game. I remember when the Steam release of this game came out, streamers were jumping at the opportunity to play it. At least the ones I followed were. I don't know how universal this was, but it's a rage game, so it makes sense that the people whose job it is to suffer for our entertainment would gravitate to it. Truly the ultimate noble sacrifice. But the goal of the game is to head from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen, avoiding obstacles. Okay, seems easy enough. I flee. I flee? <gasps> oh my <laughs> fuck. What the shit? Alright, so maybe it wasn't as easy as I thought, but I still really appreciated it for what it is. I kinda just like rage games in a masochistic sort of way. B tier. I was waiting for the moment I got to play Duck Life 2 again. I played this game non-stop growing up. It was one of my go-to flash games as a kid. It doesn't just stop at Duck Life 2 though. The entire Duck Life franchise was a staple on any flash site. Not you. Did you know there are eight games in the series? and they're working on a ninth? It looks like this, but they're certainly working on it. There's something that's just so beautifully simple about this game. Get a baby duck, pump it full of whatever the hell this gunk is, put it through training more rigorous and abusive than that of the world's most powerful military force, and set it out to obliterate the competition. It's sort of like playing as a pageant mom, you know? By the end of this, Girl Pipe was a force to be reckoned with, with an unbreakable spirit. Just look at this incredible comeback. I don't think you're gonna win. I don't think you're gonna win. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna get I second place. If you're, not, you're gonna, if you're not first place, you're last. Holy shit. True. Bro, it's fuck. That's true as fuck. Holy shit, this is going crazy right now. It's a real nail biter. 
This is no, no, right now. no, it's over. It's oh, over. His They're better flyers. They're better flyers. What the fuck was that? Don't you just want to root for her? You already know this is nest tier for me. Could be nostalgia, but I don't care. There is no game. It's a puzzle game where the narrator is trying to convince you that there is no game. It's got this sort of meta narrative vibe of a game like Stanley Parable, which I'm sure it's been compared to a billion times before. It's short and sweet, it's clever, A tier game. Time for Sticky Ninja missions. You play as this Sticky Ninja, and you lunge headfirst into your enemies with the might of a thousand men. Also, you stick to things. Each mission has a win condition, usually just clearing the map of enemies. Though after a certain point they start reusing maps and just changing up the win conditions to get slightly more annoying, it's sort of like a new game plus mode, but not good? I've been told Sticky Ninja Academy is the better game, so my bad. B tier. Oh, here it is. This is practically the whole reason for this video. Learn to fly. Peak video gaming. You play as a penguin who, after being cyberbullied, has decided to prove the haters wrong by blowing a bunch of stuff up and finally learning to fly. Like, it's it's more like gliding, but look, you, you'll you take whatever you can get. Basically, there are milestones you hit that give you money and you can spend that money to upgrade your flying contraption to be as efficient and as powerful as possible. The game caps off with the destruction of your mortal enemy, an iceberg which brought your flight to an abrupt halt at the end of the first game, and so ends the most influential rivalry in the history history of all media. S tier. IQ Ball is another puzzle game where you play as a ball, this time shooting out your retractable arm to navigate a level so you can reach the target. My favorite levels were probably the ones that just let me swing around using my Spider-Man web slinger arm thing. My least favorite level was this one. Overall a really good time, with some interesting level design choices which usually worked out, didn't always work out, but usually worked out to be really fun. Oh, this level sucks ass. You holy shit, you got so far. <laughs> that is one of the worst levels in the game. A tier game, Planet Life, the only RPG on the list and pretty much as unique as it gets as far as RPGs go. You play as a planet and do all the things one would expect a planet to do. Your first inhabitant is this silly little robot named Burger. And isn't he just the sweetest little guy? I played for over an hour and only just unlocked an entirely new area to explore by the time I was done playing. My only complaint is that it's a bit grindy at times. It can take a while to progress, but it doesn't a lot of things and does those things really well. A tier. Wow, would you look at that? A whole entire tier list. I'm sort of like a real YouTuber now. Can't wait for part two.